So um, the CLL14 study is a randomized phase three study that um, was started in late 2015 and had its uh, primary readout uh, last year in 2019. And uh, this study was aimed at patients with previously untreated CLL with coexisting conditions, which was assessed based on um, the cumulative illness rating scale. So the, the SIRS score, which indicate that um, patients, when they have more than six points on this scale, that they are unfit, meaning that they have a considerable burden of coexisting conditions that it limits their fitness and uh, doesn't allow them to receive intensive, uh, intensive treatments. And in this study, this, this um, particular group of patients either received corambosilobinutuzumab as a chemoimmunotherapy over um, overall 12 cycles or a targeted treatment with venetoclax plus obinutuzumab, so the BCL2 inhibitor in combination with a type 2 CD20 antibody. And this, both treatments given over fixed duration of overall 12 cycles, six cycles of combination therapy and six additional consolidating cycles of either corambosil monotherapy or six cycles of venetoclax monotherapy. And the primary endpoint of progression of free survival was met in 2019 and published in the New England Journal of Medicine. And, uh, and it was shown that the treatment not only significantly extends PFS compared to uh, um, uh, chemomonotherapy, but that it also um, uh, achieves significantly deeper MRD remissions, meaning that we are able in these elderly and unfit patients where it was usually difficult to achieve deep remissions given that we could not treat them intensively, but with, the, with, the, with this uh, venetoclax obinutuzumab regimen, we were able to achieve undetectable minimal residual disease levels in over 70% of the patients, so approximately 74 to 75% of patients did not have detectable uh, minimal residual disease after those 12 cycles of treatment. And, uh, and we did then a follow-up analysis earlier this year and published it in, in Lancet Oncology. And in this report, we showed that um, after all patients had been off treatment for um, at least two years, the remissions were um, in the vast majority of patients sustained. So we saw that at three years, the PFS rate was still at 82% with venetoclax obinutuzumab compared to approximately 50% with corambosol obinutuzumab. So this confirmed that this principle of having fixed duration without chemomonotherapy, solely with targeted agents, is, is that this combination is feasible and effective, and that these deep MRD remissions actually really translate to a um, significant PFS extension. And now in this ESH, we will provide a further specific analysis on minimal residual disease in CLL14, and we raise several questions in this analysis. One of them being, what happens actually while the patients are on treatment with their minimal residual disease? And for that, we looked at um, time points after patients have completed the six cycles of combination therapy. So patients had, had, were on treatment on, of, on approximately um, uh, after six cycles, so half uh, a year, so approximately six months. And um, we looked at their MRD levels at that stage and compared these to their MRD levels at the end of treatment. And we saw that approximately one third of the patients during this period of time where they are taking venetoclax monotherapy experiences a deepening of remission, not just from MRD positive to MRD, MRD negative states, but by using um, highly sensitive NGS measurements of minimal residual disease, we were able to see that the remissions, even patients who had undetectable MRD at 10 to the minus four, experienced deeper remissions up to below 10 minus six at the end of treatment. So this uh, observation confirms that it makes a lot of sense to use these six cycles of consolidating venetoclax monotherapy in order to deepen the remission. And the other question, of course, is what happens to patients who have still detectable minimal residual disease after those 12 cycles? Because a lot of um, practitioners, of course, ask, does it make sense to continue treating those patients if they didn't achieve MRD negativity after 12 cycles? And we can't, of course, um, certainly uh, answer this question with certainty, given that we simply didn't test this in, in this randomized trial. But we did observe that within those approximately 20 patients who had detectable MRD after venetoclax treatment, approximately half actually had an increase of MRD while they were already on venetoclax. So these patients would probably not benefit from extending treatment with venetoclax simply because they already had increasing uh, MRD while on treatment. Therefore, these patients would probably be ones who might benefit from treatment intensification if, if the goal is to get them into an MRD negative remission. And on the other hand, we saw that the other half of those patients had 
um, dropping MRD values between cycle seven and the end of treatment, meaning that these patients could potentially benefit from simply extending treatment by another six months or a year in order to ultimately achieve MRD negativity. So this is, of course, just exploratory. We don't know whether this ultimately would translate to a significant PFS benefit, but it certainly shows that it, um, it is not that straightforward when looking at fixed time points of minimal residual disease status, because this is a very dynamic status. And we always, when we do a measurement of minimal residual disease, it's just a snapshot of what is actually happening regarding this highly dynamic and heterogeneous disease. And therefore, we raise then the next question, which is what are the MRD kinetics when patients get off treatment and do they differ between um, pleurambucil and venetoclax? And what we are able to observe, just to, to um, summarize it in, in a few sentences, is basically first we tried to summarize all of these longitudinal MS MRD assessments that we are continuing to do in our patients and break these down into um, a parameter that allows us to uh, um, to represent the, the individual patient specific kin kinetic. And we were able to use a mathematical growth model that breaks the growth down to a clonal growth rate based on our NGS measurements that we do every three to six months. So, so we ultimately were able to see that the significantly lower growth rates after venetoclax or venetuzumab um, uh, ultimately should lead to a disproportionately longer time until disease relapse occurs given that the growth rates are significantly different between chemomonotherapy and the venetoclax or venetuzumab treatment. And uh, we so were able to confirm this even with now presenting for the first time the four-year PFS rates from CL14. We had just a few weeks ago actually closed the database uh, again and in, in order to look at the current um, follow-up data from, from the patients. And we saw that um, the four-year PFS rate for venetoclax or venetuzumab is at 74% now, so only a slight decrease from after all patients have now been off treatment for more than three years, showing that again, the treatment is that this treatment principle of fixed duration, MRD eradicating um, approach, that this, this, this idea is, is working in our patients and that the vast majority of patients in the venetoclax arm still has not, first of all, experienced uh, disease relapse. Only approximately 30 disease relapses have occurred until now. And the majority of patients still did not require a next line of treatment. And, uh, and, and considering the high age of the patients in this study, the median age at enrollment was approximately 73 years in both arms. This shows that it, uh, there are high chances that most of the patients treated in, CL, in the venetoclax or venetuzumab arm CML14 will probably only require one line of therapy in their lifetime, uh, given the deep remissions and the sustained benefits. And this, um, we feel, is a um, uh, patient-relevant advancement of, of, uh, of, of how we, we can manage um, our patients and that we can offer them now a fixed duration approach in the early frontline setting that's, um, that does not on the one hand necessitate chemomonotherapy um, and therefore avoids the chemo-specific toxicities and on the other hand that patients do not need to remain on targeted treatment until disease relapse but that they can have um, a certain amount of time where they don't need to have uh, any drug intake and, and where the ultimately, hopefully, their quality of life will improve over time.